Welcome everyone, this is Joe Dagger, the host of the Business Side of One podcast. With me today is David Wilkinson. David is the editor-in-chief of the Oxford Review. He is also an acknowledged to be one of the world's leading experts in dealing with ambiguity and uncertainty and developing emotional resilience. David teaches and conducts research at several UK universities and is the author of the Ambiguity ambiguity advantage okay if i get that out what great leaders are great at so david i'd like to welcome you one of the things i think when people hear of the oxford review okay the immediate thought especially in the states probably will be the harvard review okay (laughs) is this a uk version or what is there a is there a you know a very distinctive difference between the two yeah, there's quite a significant difference. So the Harvard Business Review tends to focus on, well, it does, it focuses on kind of opinion pieces from gurus in the market, so largely consultants and people like that. And then they produce small pieces of uh, research. Everything that we do is all research-based. Um, so just, just to give you an example, so in academia, for example, when I'm teaching um, students and when I'm uh, working with researchers, what we do is we look at how good a piece of research is and there's some very kind of simple heuristics that you can use, some simple ways to see based on the kind of journal that it comes from. So in in academic land, for example, there's a thing called an impact factor. Now, the impact factor tells you it's, it's a very simple measure of how many times a journal is cited in other people's research just as a kind of level of quality. So kind of right at the top, one of the top journals is Nature. So if you know if you get a, an article published in Nature as a researcher, you've kind of made it. And if you're not a professor already, you will be very shortly. <laughs> it's very difficult to get into. It's a very stringent peer-reviewed process. You're going to be, you know, your research is going to be criticised and looked at by some of the best brains on the planet. Uh, so to get past them and get it published is really something. Now their impact factor at the moment is around about forty-seven point nine. The Harvard Business Review impact factor, and this may surprise people, is 0.72, largely because it doesn't produce research. What it's doing is it's producing opinion pieces. Now, we're very different. All we do is we review research. There's no opinion pieces at all in this. It's All you get is the absolute research findings. So you're on a good basis when you're using this stuff. And it's quite impressive to actually reel off pieces of research when you're working anyway. (laughs) Well, I don't think most lay people, okay, really understand some of the rigors of academic research, okay, that takes place. Is there a way that you could just explain that briefly? I I mean, because I'm not sure it can be brief even, all (laughs) right? Yeah, no, no, we we can do that. So... Um, the idea of research is it's meant to be as unbiased or as objective as possible. Now, there's no such thing as 100% objectivity because we're human beings, but there are steps that we can take to make sure that what we're doing isn't very biased. <clears throat> so we want to make sure that the um, the research is both what we call valid, in other words, that we're using the right kind of instruments for that piece of research, And it's reliable so that we can repeat it and we can see whether those findings actually are repeatable. And that's what we're kind of looking for. We're looking for rigor within the research. Now, what we find is that um, then we do the research, we publish the research. And the reason for publishing the research in an academic journal is for other academics to look at it and say, yes, we agree with it or no, there are holes in it. There are weaknesses in this research. And it's by that kind of uh, peer review process that academics get better and better and better at doing the research and making sure that the researching things have got some gravity and some some usefulness. Now, the peer review process is you submit a paper to a decent journal and then other academics will have a look at it and they'll criticise it. And they'll say, hang on, this isn't actually measuring what you think it's measuring or that your your statistics are flawed or the whole premise is flawed or there's some other evidence that you haven't looked at. And it kind of keeps us academics on our toes, as it were. Now, in non-peer-reviewed um, journals like the Harvard Business Review and, and magazines and things like that, that doesn't happen. There's an editorial. They're trying to sell a magazine. 
peer-reviewed papers, on the other hand, what they're trying to do is make sure that the the research is the best research because they want to publish the best research. And therefore, we have this reviewing process, this peer-reviewing process, and basically it's kind of criticising you. And it's, it's, it's quite... Um, it's quite a tough process, particularly if you're just starting out. But, you know, I've, I've been doing research for years and I'm still, you know, there are papers that go in and come back with some horrible comments on them. So you've just got to get used to it. Yeah, you, you, you have to be kind of hardened to that, right? you got to be ready to take it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you don't last very long if you don't. <laughs> Is there something that I did not ask that you'd like to add to this conversation? No, go to the website and try it. Um, there's lots of kind of sign up things. Uh, there's quite a lot of material. There's a good blog. Uh, go and have a look. I think that's the only thing. Okay. Well, how do I find out more? Tell me what the website is. Okay. Yeah. If you go to all the W's, Oxford hyphen review.com, um, go there, have, have a look around the blog, have a look around. There's a whole load of downloads. Um, you can sign up for, uh, the blog posts. They're posted at least once a week, usually twice a week. Um, but also um, the, there's lots of kind of freebies, um, free research briefings and things like that that you can sign up for. Okay. So we're very generous. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank <laughs> you very much, Dave. Podcasts will be available on Business Planner on iTunes Store and Business Planner on website. So I would like to thank all the listeners for listening. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs>